So much of our world around us requires us to, to model its behavior in non-linear ways. Again, for example, gravity. Gravity doesn't act in a linear way. The longer something drops, it begins to accelerate. And we see that idea pop up lots of times. So because that's a common um, reality that we exist in, we, we, we give kind of a special treatment towards models that represent that. And those models that we represent are called quadratic equations. And a quadratic in a standard form is basically an equation, looks like one of the trinomials that we've had before, ax squared plus bx equals c, and we set it equal to zero. And there we see a quadratic equation in standard form. Sometimes we also call them a second degree polynomial. And can you see why? Because we have this additional term, this x squared term. So we want to learn how to solve those types of problems. How do you solve this equation for our unknown, for x? Well, if the equation was just simply 7x plus 10 equals 0, well, we can subtract 10 from both sides and divide by 7, and, and we become comfortable in solving linear equations. But when we do that, uh, that process with a quadratic, it doesn't fall as straightforward. And so what we need to do is rely heavily upon our ability to factor. So let's walk through an example. Let's say I add that to make it a quadratic, x squared minus 7x plus 10. So our first step in solving that goes through where I want to factor it. And I'll explain why here in a moment. So if I factor that, remember how we factor that? In this particular one, it's a trinomial with trial and error. Um, looks like a negative 5 and a negative 2. All right, so I just rewrote the quadratic equation. I just rewrote it in factored form. I didn't change it, didn't do anything, just rewrote it in quadratic or in factored form. And that leads us to a very important understanding. Let's say, for example, that I have two factors. And if I set them equal to 0, what can we say about either one of those two factors? Well, if a times b equals 0, then we know that a has to equal 0 or b has to equal 0. Applying that property, applying that idea to this problem where we're at now, then we know that in order for this to be true, either x minus 5 has to equal 0 or x minus 2 has to equal 0. Well, let's find out what x's make that true. In this particular case, if x were 5, that would be true. And if x were 2, that would be two. That would be true. Do we have our solutions? We got an x equals something, and typically that means we have a solution. But I have two solutions. Well, let's first of all, let's, let's plug them in and find out. Let's try a 5. Uh, that would be 25 minus uh, 7 times 5, which is a 35, plus a 10 equals 0. That's true. I know that for x to equal 5 makes this a true statement, so one of my solutions is x equals 5. Let's try a 2. 4 minus 14 plus 10 equals a 0. Adding those up, I also see that's true. So what I was able to discover is, is that I can solve equations written in a second degree polynomial or quadratic form. The best way to solve them is through factoring. Once I have them in a factored form, then I can find their individual solutions of each factor, and then I can plug them back in to make sure that they work. Notice how many solutions I have. I have two. When I have a quadratic, the highest degree term is an x squared, which tells me that at most I will have two solutions.